Hey everyone, this is Fix Reef, and today we have Ecotech Reef Link up for repair. I have shown a lot of fairly complicated repairs in the past, so today I figured I'll add a, a video on how to do a simple repair that many of you now might be able to do at home, and it's going to be fairly inexpensive. So this uh, specific Reef Link uh, has a very particular problem that is identifiable by the LEDs uh, that light up here on this um, on this ring. Uh, let's take a look at what they look like. If I provide straight um, AC power, it goes goes through the initialization. Let me zoom in. So the rifling goes through the initialization, and you can see that um, there is a green LED, a red LED, um, another red LED, a couple of orange LEDs and another red LED on. So this is a particular code. This is a particular code that indicates a very specific problem with this unit. Which problem? We're about to find out. First, let's figure out how to disassemble this. As you can see, you can't really see any screws anywhere to take apart. And um, it actually is not all that hard. First, we need to remove the rubber boot carefully without um, damaging anything. It just glued to the bottom of the case. Now, that now exposes a few screws here, but uh, let's hold off on removing those screws because there is also a label. This label needs to be removed carefully, at least from the bottom. Not um, um, all the way necessarily, but at least the bottom needs to be um, pried off. Okay, that's good enough. Now, we can remove the, the screws. All right, now that the, the screws are gone, the bottom should come off eventually. Okay. Need to remove this cable. Carefully just pry it open, and let's take the main board out. Okay, that's all what it is. So let's zoom in and see what we actually have here. All right, look at this. So main AC power comes in. Uh, there's going to be a, a converter from AC to DC. It appears that this is a 5 volt um, 0.8 amp converter. Look at this. Unlike Neptune, somebody actually puts decent quality um, power supplies inside when they decide to have it on the inside of the unit. This is our typical RF module that you can find in all of the Ecotech um, lights, uh, pre-Mobius. This is this model is probably from what 2012, 2013. So um, on this side, other than the power, we also have. A USB port. This is so that you can connect it to your uh, computer to program it, and a network port, of course, so that you can have a more um, permanent connectivity with your lights. Okay. Other than that, there is a the main uh, controller over here. This is likely uh, flash memory. I would guess that this chip, given the proximity to the LAN, is the LAN controller. This is a fairly well-known, uh, I think, Qualcomm uh, Wi-Fi module. That's the set of LEDs that light up, telling us that there is a problem. And um, that's about it. It's all what's on this side. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in again. I'll be careful because I'm providing, um, you know, AC voltage here. But um, I'll plug it in again. And there is the set of LEDs. Let me turn it properly. And once again, green, red, red, orange, orange, um, and red. That's the code that we have to deal with. So, so far, so good. Let me unplug this. 
Uh, so far, so good. Since the LEDs light up, it means that AC power works. AC to DC conversion works, otherwise we wouldn't be able to do anything. Um, controller likely works because that's the uh, unit that sets the color scheme for the LEDs, so that's probably good. I don't know um, about anything else here. Um, one of the common problems with this unit is that the RF module actually comes loose. This is one of those modules that you can actually swap. It's done like this. You can put a new one back in, or you have to. You can upgrade it with, to something else, uh, replace it. So it's fairly simple, and and it's and it's kind of loose in here. It's not really all that, all that uh, s strong. So what uh, was happening is that every once in a while it would come loose, and then without the RF module connectivity, there is going to be an error code showing here. So what um, uh, what uh, Ecotech did is that they eventually put this uh, s this foam over here on the top of the under under the top case to kind of hold that um that rf module in place and prevent it from falling out which is a smart idea okay but let's go back to the original problem um the original problem is that we have a particular error code through these leds and it must be coming from somewhere it's not the rf module i know that for for a fact let's take a look at the other side of this board So the other side of this board is fairly simplistic. Um, other than the LED control logic over here, um, you also have, oh yes, and the connector over to the uh, button um, press. You also have all of this logic over here that supports the main controller. That's basically the circuitry that, that just enables the controller to work. Uh, notice, by the way, all of this residue from uh, previous soldering of larger components onto this board. What what the mess? Why can't you just clean this when you assemble this properly? And then we have this module over here. Now, those of you who have done uh, have looked into uh, smartphones, cell phones, um, uh, tablet repairs, the type of things would immediately, immediately recognize this module. This is the micro SD module. Uh, is, there is an SD card inside of this, and this SD card is typically, it, it's very common in electronic devices. It's used to store additional data that's otherwise not, uh, does not fit into the controller memory, flash memory that's on board. Uh, it's not supposed to be super fast or anything like this. Uh, in, um, you know, smartphones and tablets, it's used for storing pictures. Uh, Neptune Apex has it in their newer modules um, as well in their head units. Um, uh, in the case of uh, Ecotech, this module typically stores configuration uh, for this module, it stores uh, firmware updates, uh, that type of thing. Now, this module often fails because micro SDs are not exactly the best highest quality devices. Also, they have limited lifetime because of the number of writes that they can support. I'm sure that most of you who had to deal with SD cards at some point lost your data either on your um, digital cameras or your smartphones or tablets or whatever, um, where, where it just eventually fails on you and, and, and it, there is nothing you can do about it. So let's, the easiest way to attack this problem is to try to swap this for a brand new module because it's possible that this is bad. Now, if you attempt to uh, to get the card out, there is a metal plate on top. You have to be careful not to break anything. Do not pry it. Right now, it's fairly secure. Don't attempt to pry it out open. You don't. You shouldn't be doing this. Instead, you can see that there are a couple of grooves here. There is one over here. There is one over here. You can just grab it by either of those grooves or by the edge. Grooves are mostly for your nails or the edge if you have a tool like this. And you can just carefully push it down. And when you push it this way, it just flips open and the card can be removed. Now let's take a closer look at the card itself. So this is the original Kingston 2GB microSD card. I don't know, this looks like a standard no-class 
type card. That's probably the basic one that they could get back in 2013, 2012, when they were designing these units. Um, so that's what we have to do. Two gigabyte micro SD. So let's have it re removed. So I have these types of replacements available. Uh, before I replace, what I could do now, it's open, it's brand new, I opened it just to make sure that the card that I have in here actually works for this video, but um, this is also Kingston, uh, but these days, of course, you cannot buy 2 gigabyte cards anymore, 8, 16 gigabyte is what you basically have available to you now. Um, most of these cards come with these adapters. Right, so you can plug it in, and then you can plug it into your laptop or a reader, and uh, be able to read the data. Um, so, the way to do this first is to take the original card from the device, plug it into the reader, and put it into your laptop or your your reader, so that um, so that you can see if you can spot any data. I just tested this card. I plugged it into my laptop and my computer does not recognize it in any shape or form. So, so this original card is as dead as it gets. Whereas this, this is a 16 gig um, class 10. Again, this is not a 4K camera, right, with video recording on it. Uh, the class of the device is not going to matter. That's just what I have available. And these are fairly cheap cards. There are just a few dollars on, on Amazon or other suppliers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install this card instead and see if that makes a difference. So to install this, just position it down, just like that. Leave the cover back on, press it, and push it back. It locks in, and it's, it's installed. That's it. Now that we have it installed, let's see if this fixes the problem. So carefully, again, because this is AC high voltage, we don't want to touch anything on that end. Plug it in. It has completed initialization. Actually, see if I can reset this. Yes, after the reset, it's an initialized form. There is nothing on this card. It needs to be initialized. Uh, the good news is that, um, very good news is that although this card is dead and there is nothing that can be extracted out of this card anymore, there is no, no information on it that cannot be um, restored from other sources. Um, again, it contains firmware updates, it contains configuration files. All of this you can pull back from your Ecotech uh, configuration utility and put it back on the card. Fairly straightforward, fairly simple. It's not like you need to have particular software installed on here or data to be on this card for uh, for this unit to work. So all you have to do now is um, unplug this from power, plug it into your um, laptop with a USB cable, so now all I have to do is just go in, configure this device set up all of the configuration parameters, reprogram it, save the data, and it's going to be as good as new. And this completes this repair. Um, basically, I showed you a very simple way to fix one of the most common problems with Reflinks, and that is a failed micro SD card. Uh, we know that we don't need to have any special software on the SD card, it's just a blank uh, new SD card. Again, I put 16 gigabyte card in it and it worked. You can put 8 gigabyte card in it and it will work. If you can find a 2 gigabyte card and you put it in there, it will more, more than likely work. Uh, and uh, the, the utility that uh, comes with uh, Ecotech uh, Reflink um, through your computer allows you to reformat the card so that it has the proper formatting on it and the structure on it uh, for this unit to work. Um, so that's basically all what it is. A simple swap on SD card and the unit is back in operation again. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this quick uh, video. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.